To give some backstory, my 21 female sister, 26, cannot have kids. She has wanted a kid for a few years, but doesn't want one who doesn't share the same DNA, her words. So she asked me if I'd be willing to have a baby and give it to her. And I said no. So my sister and her husband moved into my parents' house, as their house needs working on. She said it would take four to six months before they could move back. My mom wanted to have a family dinner yesterday and had all of my siblings and me over. Before dinner, my sister asked if they could instead move in with us because it's closer to brother-in-law's job than my parents' house and she didn't want to live with my parents. I asked my boyfriend if it was okay and we agreed to let them stay with us instead. That was until she started making jokes during dinner that I see as red flags. They were along the lines of, you better hope I don't hide your birth control and you end up getting prego. I awkwardly laughed. Then she said, maybe I'll poke a hole or two in your protection too. By then I stopped laughing and started to feel off vibes. I tried to steer the conversation onto something else, but she kept making the jokes. I didn't even last until the end of the dinner and I told her I changed my mind about them living with us because I didn't like her jokes. They all said I was overreacting and my boyfriend backed me up and said it wasn't funny. So we left. And since then, my siblings and parents have called me a drama queen and said I blew it all out of proportion and I'm making it seem like my sister is a bad person. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. They weren't jokes, they were threats. She threatened to sabotage your birth control to force you into an unwanted, unplanned pregnancy, leaving you with two choices that you shouldn't be forced to make because it would be a pregnancy that you had no hand in making true. She wants to force you into a pregnancy so she can somehow get the baby from you. I can see her calling CPS on you for the smallest things to force them to take the child away and place it with her. She showed you her true colors. Believe her. Do not let her near your house. Not the idiot. She asked me if I'd be willing to have a baby and give it to her, and I said no. After the above... I would say that your sister is of questionable mental stability and you cannot disregard her jokes. Therefore, it would be best to stay away from her. Anyone who objects to your refusal to host them in your home is more than welcome to roll out the welcome mat at their home. Everyone's the idiot here. I would say you should know your sister. They might have been bad jokes and maybe you were overreacting. But like when people say, I'm going to kill you, it's very, very rarely a real threat. Granted, no one's perfect. Sometimes people can make a bad joke because they know it's so obviously a joke and you'd never take it seriously. Relax, she's just having baby fever. I disagree. An article I read years back discussed how a certain type of joke isn't ever actually intended to be a joke. Instead, it's about testing the waters, either to see if there are like-minded listeners or to gauge how strongly someone might react if it were presented seriously. Sister was 100% testing to see how easily she could get away with doing exactly what she was threatening and who would support her afterward. OP needs to be very careful around her sister because that wasn't joking. That is sister laying out her intended roadmap to getting herself a baby and seeing who, if anybody, would call her out on it. At the same time, she can still claim it's just a joke as plausible deniability. OP go low contact with everyone Everyone, parents, siblings, in-laws, cousins, aunts, uncles, anyone that says you're a drama queen, tell them to buzz off. This is not a joking matter. You told her no. Your sister and your parents need some help if they think that's acceptable. If she acts like this when she hasn't even moved in yet, you would be in for trouble. They can just stay with the parents. Maybe your mom will offer to have a kid for her. My wife and I have a two-year-old son. About a month ago, his daycare center closed its doors due to staffing issues. We were given one week notice before they closed and had to scramble to find someone to care for our son during the day as we both work full time. Luckily, her mom doesn't work and was able to come to help us out. We've been looking for a new daycare, but it's been a struggle. So for the last month, my mother-in-law has been living with us. I know my son loves his grandma time and mother-in-law is good with him. I will also admit that mother-in-law does help out around the house with small stuff like dishes and laundry that I do appreciate. But at the same time, it's been a month 
and I am just feeling very cramped in my own house. I wake up and mother-in-law is there, usually on a video call with her sister, having coffee in the kitchen. I come home from work and mother-in-law is there. I try to watch TV and mother-in-law is there. It's just getting to be a lot for me. I find myself being very short with my wife and just being angry a lot. My wife has noticed and I told her I'm frustrated with the daycare situation and just stressed with having mother-in-law here. She told me that mother-in-law is doing us a huge favor and I need to suck it up and deal with it. This past Monday, I had a particularly bad day at work, so I got home already in a rough mood. During dinner, mother-in-law just kept going on and on about her sister's kids and some problem they were having. I didn't say anything. I just kind of kept my head down and ate my dinner. My wife noticed I was quiet and asked me if I was okay. I told her I just had a rough day and I was fine. A little later on, I was on my phone looking through emails about a new daycare and my wife asked me again if I was okay. I told her I was fine, just trying to find a new daycare. Not even 15 minutes later, she asked me again and I kind of snapped at her that if she asked the question six more times, maybe she'd get a different answer. Mind you, every time she asked me if I was okay, mother-in-law was right there too, so it wasn't like I could tell my wife that living with her mom is driving me nuts. I then decided to take the dogs for a walk to clear my head a bit, and mother-in-law said she'd come with me. I just about screamed. The entire walk, I just listened to her babble on about whatever thought came into her head, and by the time we got home, I was mentally exhausted. I just wanted to go to bed, but my wife asked me again if I was okay. I finally told her that I didn't want to talk about it because it's not going to change anything. And the last time I told her how I felt, she told me to suck it up. So why should I open up to her? I told her I just want to go back to our old life and have some privacy in our house again. She got defensive and told me mother-in-law is doing us a huge favor and it's short term and I just need to deal with it. She told me I'm being an idiot for letting it affect me so much and acting like a petulant teenager about it. You are the idiot. Things happen and you are in a temporary situation until you find daycare. What do you want exactly? It feels like the very existence of your mother-in-law disturbs you, whether she does anything provocative or not, while you need her existence until your circumstances change. The only thing I could see a problem was her wanting to come to walk with you, which you easily could have said you just wanted some alone time. And from the context of your story, I don't see your mother-in-law as a person to refuse it or cause drama. She is not the reason you had a rough day at work. I think you ignored the part where OP's wife told them to suck it up. OP's feelings are being invalidated. Could they have handled their emotions better? Yes, of course they could. But OP is actively looking for solutions and their wife seems to not really care. OP, is your wife looking for any solutions or is she putting it off? I would say not the idiot because it's OP's house too. And if they don't want someone there, regardless of all the help they're giving, then they're able to want that, especially if they are actively looking for solutions. My dad married my stepmom when I was eight. So I pretty much grew up with my stepmom and her family. I have two stepbrothers and my oldest stepbrother is the joking, teasy, busybody type. He's married and has two kids, by the way. This whole thing started when he started to make fun of my baby name choice before my two oldest sons were born. Even though the two previous names my husband and I chose were normal, like Jason, Chris, Adam, etc. But my stepbrother would constantly make fun and criticize the name, saying things like, poor kid, isn't that the name of a famous creep? And this was my bully's name. So I remember my bully whenever I call my nephew's name. He criticized the name so much that I had to change it. He got my stepfamily on board with making fun of my choices too. It was frustrating as he'd excuse his behavior by saying it's teasing, giving advice. I felt bad because he ruined those names for me and caused me to choose other names. I'm currently pregnant with my third and it's a boy. Once we announced the gender of our baby, my stepbrother kept nagging me about the name we chose, wanting to know what it was. So I kept ignoring him after he kept bringing this question up in every family function. Last week was the final straw. I was visiting my dad and stepmom and my stepbrother asked me to tell him the name I chose for my son, but I refused. 
He tried to get the family to pressure and corner me into spitting it out, as he said, but I blew up at him, saying I won't tell him because he'll make me hate it so much that I'd change it after he hassles me with his rude opinions and jokes and memes on the name. I told my husband, and I really like the name and won't risk giving him the chance to harass us into changing it. My stepbrother stared at me, looking stunned. He then looked at his wife, then excused himself to the bathroom. He seemed very upset. Everyone noticed and gave me some looks. My dad later pulled me aside, saying that what I said to my stepbrother and the way I spoke to him in front of everyone was unacceptable. He said he cared enough about my children and me to give me advice and share his opinions on my name choice, but I treated him with hostility and should prepare an apology for insulting him like that. Things have been tense since then. Not the idiot. Why does stepbrother get to treat you like crap, but you have to apologize for standing up for yourself? Your dad needs to step up and have your back. Also, it's just weird that stepbrother is getting involved in this business. Is he competitive or jealous, maybe? I would triple down and tearfully complain that he is harassing a pregnant woman. Tell him, well, we would have gone with your stepbrother's name, but we know this really obnoxious too with the same name. OP, maybe don't let him meet your new baby until he apologizes for being an idiot to you. You might have to do the same thing with your dad because he obviously doesn't see that your stepbrother is the problem. I'd angrily ask my dad, why is it okay for my stepbrother to do this and why he never pushes back on that. I'd be tempted to say, oh sure, I'll apologize. Then tell the stepbrother, I'm sorry that your skin is so thin that you can't take what you dish out. Do not apologize. Keep your name to yourself. And frankly, I tell him if he tries to ruin the name after you name your child, you'll call him a horrible nickname of your choice. I, female 30, have been married to my husband, 33, for five years with no children. We lived in a major city until eight months ago and both worked in high-pressure corporate jobs. Then early this year, I was offered a job in a smaller city for a lot more money. My husband's employer gave him the option of working remotely, but he expressed that he felt very burnt out and needed a break and a fresh start. With my pay increase and the reduced living costs in our new city, I calculated we could afford to live off of one income if we reduced some unnecessary expenses. When we were both working full time, we had a housekeeper each week, sent out our laundry, and regularly ate at restaurants or ordered takeout. We agreed that if he took on the cleaning and cooking responsibilities, he could leave his job and focus on starting a more creative career that would bring him joy. Initially, this went very well. He dealt with the majority of the cleaning, cooking, and grocery shopping while working on writing. I do the dishes after dinner, do extra cleaning on the weekend, and cook a few nights a week. In the last month, things have gone downhill. He's been doing minimal to no cleaning and forgetting to do the laundry and go grocery shopping. He's completely stalled on his creative projects and spends his whole day playing video games. I gently checked in to see if he was feeling depressed, but he got angry and told me I was treating him like a slave and it was unfair to expect him to look after everything in the house. So I blew back up at him and told him if he didn't want to look after the house, he needed to go back to work because I wasn't going to pay for him to sit at home on his butt. He hasn't spoken to me since we fought two days ago. I've received messages from my mother-in-law and other family members saying I'm mistreating him. I've apologized for how I phrased it, but haven't backed down on the need for him to go back to work. Am I the idiot? I'm 56 female, the breadwinner in our house. My dear husband, 61, hasn't had a paying job in seven years. I love this man. He cooks, cleans, does the lawn work, helps me with the laundry, helps with our pets, does the grocery shopping, makes fabulous banana waffles, and completely supports me and takes care of me during my chemo. I'm completely blessed and appreciate him every day. So we have the same situation you do, and you were absolutely correct in calling him out. He needs to contribute to the home and the marriage. You're not treating him like a slave. You are also not his mother. He needs to grow back up. Good for you for standing up for yourself. Not the idiot. Exactly how is it unfair? Ask them. How is it unfair to expect him to do the bulk of the housework when not only is he not working, but that was the condition for him to leave his job? Why is it unfair to expect him to pull his weight? 
Oh, he probably thinks it's women's work and that OP should do it all on top of being the only one working. I'd ask if he'd think it was okay if the positions were reversed. He'd probably think OP was lazy and neglectful. Not the idiot, but I really don't understand these stories. One adult at home, no children. How much cleaning is there to do? Laundry every few days and grocery shopping are done once a week for most people. Give the house a deep clean once over every week. Ask him to explain to you what constitutes a slave in his mind. I'd love to hear his response. To me, it sounds like he is depressed though, and it can be hard to get men to admit that and get help for it. Burnout is awful, and if his creative projects have stalled or aren't fulfilling the way he thought they'd be, they can make it harder. But even so, he needs to help. Household and help himself. OP shouldn't shoulder it all. I, 34 female, work as a nurse with a local hospital and am currently 20 weeks pregnant with a baby boy. My husband, 35, works part-time, 20 hours as a driver. He was laid off from his job last year, and I've been mostly responsible for making sure the bills are getting paid on time. My husband loves to play video games. He used most of his paychecks last year to build a PC and buy all the necessities. When he isn't working and playing video games, he does help around the house with chores and keeping it clean. I've noticed that my husband has been missing work lately, and when I confronted him, he got snippy and told me to leave him alone. I had my doctor's appointment on Wednesday to do an ultrasound and find out the gender of the baby. My husband was aware of this appointment as I reminded him many times. The appointment was in the early morning and when I went to see if my husband was ready to go, he was fast asleep on his keyboard. I did try to wake him up and he didn't budge. I didn't want to be late and went to the appointment alone. I found out the wonderful news that the baby was going to be a boy. When I got back to the house, my husband was still asleep at his computer desk. I went to take a quick nap before I went in for my afternoon shift. When I woke up, my husband looked at me and asked when my appointment was. I let him know that the appointment was this morning and he missed it. He then asked me what the gender of the baby was. I told him that I wouldn't tell him as I was disappointed that he didn't come with me. He will find out at the gender reveal party this weekend. He got mad and started yelling at me that he has a right to know what the gender was. I yelled back at him that he should have been at the appointment with me and not staying up all night playing video games. He shut down and went into his gaming room, slamming the door. I went to work and did try to call and text him on my breaks. He didn't answer and wouldn't talk to me when we were home. Am I the idiot for not telling my husband the baby's gender? Everyone's the idiot here. Your dude is an idiot for not living up to his responsibilities but you're the idiot for being petty with the gender of his child. This relationship is showing many red flags that will need to be addressed if it's going to smooth out and continue. Using a child or any information about said child as a lever against SO is always going to make you the bigger idiot. And to be clear, it is a very telling thing about a person. I don't want to call you an idiot. I really, really don't. However, I think that punishing him by keeping the gender of the child you both share is unreasonable. But this is not about the baby's gender. This is about the fact that your 35-year-old husband is skipping work to play video games, missing important events because he stayed up all night playing video games, and spends all of his limited income on video games. At some point, OP, you're going to have to make some decisions. Is this how you want to live? Is this the home you want your baby in? with you doing all the work, unless he feels like cleaning up a bit? This is not sustainable.